All right, real quick, I want to give an update on XReason. XReason is the uh, TypeScript and React framework I've created to build reasoning engines for LLMs. Uh, in this example, you, you can see I'm using natural language to describe um, some updates I need done as a chemical product engineer. I'm describing the, the process as a human would, and the model is correctly engineering a state machine to perform to do that work. So the model's engineered that, and then I blow that state machine up into a computer program. Uh, which you're seeing reflected here. I build, actually build the UI dynamically using the state machine. Um, but the, the important thing here is that um, I'm able to now use very natural language, the way a person would talk about tasks that need to be done, um, and the model correctly every time appears to be getting uh, the right answer to these problems. And that was all in how I changed my prompting strategy and injected the training data. Um, and you'll see here, like I'm asking for someone to take a look at skew, some skew, because I'm getting questions from legal and the model correctly um, figures out, okay, I need to recall that solution. And then we need to run regulatory checks. That's 100% right, it's exactly what I was looking for. Um, and then also here's another one where I need to um, update the marketing copy, right? And the model uh, from that correctly engineers the steps we need to take, which include uh, creating the new marketing, um, doing the market research, and generating product images. Like, incredible that the model's working this well. Um, next up, let's take a look at the training data and prompting strategy I used to get these results. All right, so I was having a heck of a time earlier with my uh, prompt strategy. Here's the solver. This is just really straightforward. It's literally just showing it questions and then answers. And the answers are enumerated lists of how to solve um, particular chemical engineering tasks. Now you notice the, the question is very dry. It's just like, you know, uh, very bland, like create a product, create marketing material, create whatever. And it's just outlining these steps. But from that data, it's able to unpack all of that extra human semantics we put on top of things when we speak naturally. And as you can see, it's very few examples uh, for the solver there. Next, let's look at the programmer. All right, so for the programmer, I used a chain of thought strategy. Uh, chain of thought basically includes this key phrase, let's take this step by step, and then a list of um, steps to take to solve any to solve this problem. Uh, I give it examples of how to handle complexity like parallel states and if-then-else statements. Uh, as you can see here, I give it a couple examples of um, what to output for a given if-then-else statement. And that limited example, those limited examples proved very powerful. It, it pretty much 100% of the time nails the um, parallel states and if then else logic. And then for training data, um, it's just examples. So this is the latter part of chain of thought. Like I'm basically saying, for example, here are, uh, and you'll see that for example, here's a, you know some, some um, solutions. And that's reinforcing the training data I did in the chain of thought. And then lastly, the last thing I basically tell the model is, all right, here's the user's query. Now what's the solution? All right, so real quick, I just want to explain how dynamic reasoning works as well. In the training data, you saw um, I had if-then-else logic, right? These conditionals. Well, how do and the model doesn't, you know, appear to reflect that, right? Like you're not seeing a whole bunch of transition logic, and like so, how is that handled? Well, we have dynamic um, state handling done by a special transition logic handler from the engine. So when I hit uh, submit here, what's going to happen is this call out to an LLM is made, and it's basically asking it um, to perform, uh, if I can get this to go away here, uh, it's it's asking it to go ahead and figure out um, which state to transition to. And it says, based on the following task lists, and it, it lists the, the task, uh, it tells it what the current state of the application is, and then it um, and then it'll ask it to, um, and it'll show the result of that state, and then it'll ask it to return the target for the next state, right? And so, um, and I give it some examples again. And so what's gonna happen here is I've got, a, I've got the model telling me, all right, the next state, because you've decided to use this recalled solution is lab testing, right? And so, uh, and this dynamic reasoning is how we're gonna build, I think, a lot of software in the future because you don't need rigid control flow statements and you don't need to make hundreds of them. You can let the LLM decide what the right next step is in a software flow, right? Like this is a standard React component just called recall solution. It's This is an on-click handler uh, that's dealing with this, this um, work here. 
and so this, this sort of ability now for us to use the neural nets to, to really explore the available solution space and provide dynamic control flow is unlocking a ton of value, a ton of value. Um, and there's really nothing I can't compose in, the, in this way. I mean, I, I'll, the next demo I'm building is for user registration for websites. Uh, and I, I might build one after that for analyzing the 10Q in Foundry because I'm going to bring X Reason into Foundry and you can see it uh, working there. But like this is super powerful to, to allow LLMs to uh, provide the control flow for us. And so like, let's just rerun that solution. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit update and rerun. And this time we're not gonna use uh, the recalled solution and the LLM is gonna tell us, uh, hey, that's a failure, bro. Like I can't do my job for you uh, if you don't use or provide a solution, right? So that is amazing right so like this is so cool and i really think it's the future of how we're going to combine like the determinism of the software um which which again i i'm the llms providing the state machine which is then exploded into an actual program each of these id states correspond to like components and well well tested code that's the classical deterministic part of the system then you have this non-deterministic part which is like the reasoning of the model building the solution along with um, determining how control flow is handled. So you're, you're getting the best of like deterministic traditional software with this non-deterministic LLM approach. And that is going to be extremely powerful. So stay tuned. I am going to bring this into Foundry as well. All right. So real quickly, I just want to show you the unsupported questions as well. So like if I ask the model something like, what's your name? You know, things that it shouldn't be answering. Uh, it does have um, in that training data examples of like things it shouldn't answer. I'm basically teaching it like to embrace the closed world problem. Unless you know 100% what the answer is, just just make sure that you respond with uh, unsupported or unsafe. And in this case, I'm showing like uh, uh, unsafe question with poor spelling, as usual. Uh, that I'm asking the model, and I want to see if it can categorize it effectively. And it does. It also categorized that as an unsafe question. Um, and so, you know, the training data is very effective at not only teaching the model like what it knows, but also what it doesn't know. And that's almost just as hard sometimes like with these models is um, to teach it like, hey, you know, like if you don't know the answer to this question, don't freaking respond with anything. Right. And so uh, within the training data, if you rewind it, you'll see there's several blocks in there that are showing examples of things that you don't know anything about. Um, don't try to answer these questions. Um, and you'll notice some pretty funny um, answers that I've put in both in, in the in the unsafe <laughs> uh, question uh, component. Uh, here I'm I'm just asking it. Oh, I need a chemical agent, you know, for attacks in 2025. Like, and throwing in that extra verbiage, like I I'm trying to trick it into thinking, and not very well at this point. Like tricking it into thinking it's solving a chemical engineering problem when in reality it's solving like a weapons problem. So. And there's more work to do there, but that is part of this. Like you really need to make sure you close off the model and there are safety layers on top of this, obviously. So, all right. So here's like another example of where I'm using really natural language, get Alice to run lab testing on SKU, whatever, then have Bob work on the revised marketing materials. Now that's actually really tr like you wouldn't think like the model based on the training data I was showing you just now would actually be able to reason through that process but it gets it like 100% of the time. So look, we've got the exact right solution. We need to run ta lab testing. We need expert review. We need the marketing material generated. Uh, so that was great. But one of the other cool things about this approach that you get for free is you can rerun, replay, and save generated solutions. So like I'm gonna hit uh, update and rerun here. I could make updates to that JSON if I want to manually and it will update. And then I can just rerun the solution the model came back with already. And I can also save them. This is a fully serialized format, right? Like I can put that into a catalog of solutions, which can then be deployed as production agents. So this approach using XState is insanely powerful and I can't wait for you all to try it.